Welcome, everybody, to our first day of this Lenten series. We are so happy to have you here. Thank you for your time. So we're going to reflect five days a week on St. Alphonsus Liguori's meditations that he offers for Lent. So we'll read you a section, share with you our thoughts, and then welcome your thoughts in the YouTube comments. So thought number one. It is most useful for our salvation to say often to ourselves, I must one day die. The church every year on Ash Wednesday brings this remembrance to the faithful. Remember, man, that thou art dust, and into dust thou shalt return. So do you remember every day that you must die, Janelle? No, I feel like you're better at remembering that. You think about your death quite regularly. (laughs) I do. I do. That's the (laughs) truth. I think it might be because of an experience I had. You know, going back to when I was 19 years old, or maybe 20, uh, I I was mugged. And I had a machete held to my throat. And in that moment, the thought was, I'm going to die. And in that moment, it was a really grace moment because I realized there are certain things that matter and certain things that just don't matter. Mm-hmm. It, many things that I thought that matter didn't matter with the message to my throat. Like what people thought of me, um, my reputation, the pennies in my pocket that I had. And don't we give our life to the penny sometimes? The only thing that was running through my mind with a machete to my throat was, am I right with God? And I mean, since we've been married, you've come to realize that I do think about my my passing. Every day. I do. <laughs> but, I a, but I think this is a grace mm-hmm. because that's the truth. Hey, friends, you're going to die one day. And in that moment, what is going to matter and what is not going to matter? Lent is a wonderful opportunity to reevaluate life, to see life as it is a blip, a second compared to eternity. Yet what we do in this little blip, what we do in this second has an eternal consequence. So let us remember today that from dust we came and to dust we shall return. The most precious furniture that was carried by the anchorites to their caves was a cross and a skull. The cross to remind them of the great love of Jesus Christ for us, and the skull to remind them of the day of their own death. And so they persevered in penitential works till the end of their days, and thus dying in poverty in the desert, they died more contented than if they had died as kings in their palaces. So who is an anchorite, first of all? It was somebody that withdrew from the world into solitude in medieval times to focus on Mm. the kingdom of God. And in one sense, Lent is that time. It's a little pause, a little withdrawing to reevaluate our life. And St. Alphonsus makes this observation, the most precious furniture that they brought along with us. Have you ever considered a skull and cross a piece of furniture? Mm -hmm. (laughs) What does the skull remind us of? And what does the cross remind us of? Two important lessons, what the, the skull, our death, and the cross, the means of our salvation. If we just focus though on the skull without the cross, what do we get? Despair. Mm-hmm. We, we pass from this life into nothingness, if that's how we see this life, without the cross. And in fact, isn't that hell? Life without God. But if we just look at the cross without the skull, meaning our own personal death, what does the cross mean? Well, then it just, Jesus, what did he die for? Mm -hmm. Maybe just his own personal convictions. I mean, set aside the revelation in scripture. So we can't just look at the skull and the cross as separate from each other. They're related, the skull and the cross. And then later on in St. Alphonsus Liguori's writings, he says, St. John Chrysostom says, the principal cause of the passion of Christ was his love for us, that he wanted to reveal his love for us, God who would rather be loved than feared. By mortifications, we atone in this life for the pains due to our sins. He that has offended God, though the offense may be pardoned, must either by expiatory works in this life or by the pains of purgatory in the next make satisfaction for the temporal punishment due to sin after remission of its guilt. His sufferings in purgatory will be infinitely greater than any torments that he could endure on earth. This just really reminded me that I really need to start 
uh, adding more penance, uh, more mortifications in my life. And it's not like there isn't, you know, things for me to do. There's a lot of things that I could choose that would just, you know, make life a little more inconvenient or just little prayers that I could just say throughout my day to offer up in reparation for my sin. And I have to say that in the last year, I feel like I just randomly God is just bringing memories to my mind most of which occurred during my teenage years of things that I did that were not glorifying to him, many of which I have confessed in the confessional. But at the same time, I don't know if I have, you know, done penance for these sins. And I feel like it's a grace, like God is allowing me during now that I have time to make reparation for those sins. Interesting. Well, thanks for sharing. Yeah, I don't really tell you about that, but it does happen actually quite a lot. You weren't really in my life at that time, my teenage years. It's true. <laughs> so, uh, friends, share with us below what stood out to you and why in the YouTube comments. We thank you for your time. And please share this with other people. It's the first day of Lent here on Ash Wednesday. Let's give other people the opportunity to welcome us. If you're watching this for the first time and you want these videos in your inbox, there'll be a link in the description. Uh, where you can click and join five days a week you get the videos oh and we're also welcoming people to pray the rosary every single day link at the end of this video 